intercompany sale of bonds, a bond subsequently purchased by an affiliate company after its issue. This is Ken Boyd, the owner of St. Louis Test Preparation. Here's our website, St. Louis Test Prep, and the Facebook page, also St. Louis Test Prep, you can see on the top of the page. So this is a difficult subject, advanced accounting generally, and I think that this topic is one of the most difficult within the consolidation part of what you learn about advanced accounting. So here's the scenario. A pairing company issues bonds to the public. Now, when that happens, that means that the bonds are sold directly to investors. The issuer gets the money, and from then on out, every transaction goes from one investor to another. So we go from issuer to investors initially, and then every transaction after that is between investors. A subsidiary company buys the parent company's bonds in the marketplace, and I put in italics here, after they're issued to the market. So we're at a point where it's the bond issued by the parent is already trading in the marketplace, and now a subsidiary buys the bond, just like any other investor might buy the bond. And we've got some issues here. When we consolidate, which again means that if we look at the parent and the sub as one company in the financials, both companies are considered part of the same company in consolidation, so we have to eliminate any activity between the two. So when it comes to bonds, we assume something called constructive retirement. When a bond is retired, that means it is paid off by the issuer and no longer exists as a liability to the issuer. We call it constructive retirement because in consolidation, we treat the bonds as if they have been retired, as if they have been paid off and are no longer outstanding held by the public. So we have to do that. Another thing we have to do is eliminate all the income and expense related to the bond issued by the parent and purchased by the sub. So the parent, for example, is paying interest. They have interest expense. The sub is earning interest. They have income. And we have an added issue if the bond is either issued or purchased at a premium or a discount. And that's the next thing we get to here at the bottom. The next thing on the page, amortization of a discount or a premium. A tricky part is, is that the parent's amortization, they may have issued the bond at run price, and the subsidiary may have purchased the bond at a different price. So each side, the parent and the subsidiary, may be amortizing a different amount depending on the premium or discount that was involved in the price. So specifically, the issue price when it's sold to the public by the parent may be different than the subsidiary's purchase price when they buy it from another investor. Well, how do I handle as an accountant that difference in amortization? Well, I post it as a gain or a loss. And I call that gain or a loss, gain or loss on constructive retirement. And that's how I handle the gain loss. So here's our example. On 11X1, a parent issues a million dollar, 9% 10 year bond. The bond's issued for a premium to yield 8%, <clears throat> which means the investor, since they're paying a premium, earns less than the face amount, 9%. They only earn 8%. And as is typical with most corporate bonds, the bonds pay interest semi-annually, in this case, November 1st, May 1st each year. So the issuer's journal entry is, we debit cash to get cash in the door for the premium paid. The liability to the issuer is the bond payable, the face amount they have to repay of a million. The difference between cash received and the liability, we call a premium on bond payable. And that's going to get amortized into income for the issuer. So we will gradually debit premium account and credit income. Another trick that's normally pay played in accounting questions is that the subsidiary does not buy the entire amount issued. So as you can see in 11X5, the subsidiary purchases only 300000 of the million dollar issue, 9% 10 year. They pay a discount, something less than the face amount of 300000 As a result, their yield is higher. It's 10% as opposed to the face amount of the bond, 9%. So the subsidiary's journal entry is 
Investment in parent company bond, it's a debit for the face amount. They pay cash, there's the, the discount that they paid, and the difference between the face amount of the investment and the cash paid is called discount on bond investment. And that again is going to get amortized into income for the subsidiary because they paid less than the face amount. So now let's think about consolidating. Step one, we calculate amortization up until the time of consolidation, which in this case is 1231X5. I'm going to assume straight line amortization. So here's, here's the premium that the issuer had. Let's evenly divide it over the 10 years the bond is outstanding. It's been four years and two months since the issue date, so we're going to amortize this much. And we have the difference between the 67000 and the amortization recognized as the unamortized portion of the bond issue. We have to keep in mind that the subsidiary only bought 300000 of the million-dollar issue, so only 11742 roughly, is the unamortized portion of the bond that was purchased by the subsidiary. So that's one thing. That's the amortization of the parent's premium. Let's talk about amortization of the subsidiary's premium. Bearing in mind that they didn't buy the bond at issue date, they bought it 1231X5. Assume straight line amortization. Here's the total discount. If we divide it evenly over six years, it's about 28.79. We recognize two months from the time the subsidiary bought the bond to the financial statement date 1231X5. There's two months of amortization. And here's the unamortized portion of the subsidiary's uh, discount that they paid on the bond. And so step three here, we can post consolidation entries. Now, what I did was to say, here's what's on the parents' books. Here's what's on the subsidiary's books. We have to adjust everything to zero so that in consolidation, there's no entry. So if we think about it, the subsidiary had an investment in parent debit. We credit to get rid of it. Here's the unamortized portion of the subsidiary's discount on bond. We debit to eliminate that. Here's the bond payable, the 300000 that the parent company owes to the subsidiary since the sub bought the bond. We debit to eliminate it. Here's the unamortized premium on bond payable that was on the parent's books. It was a credit. We debit to eliminate it. The one thing I haven't talked about yet is that interest specifically, the, the amount of money. Well, it's 9% interest on $300,000. And we're talking about the two-month period from the time the sub bought the bond until the financial statement date. So it's $4,500 in expense to the parent. It's $4,500 in income to the sub. We make adjustments for that. And then finally, we take the difference between, we take the two credits. One was a premium on bond amortization for the parent because they issued it at a premium. One is the discount that it was income to the buyer because the buyer paid less than face amount. So this 28,540 represents, once again, it's a little hard to follow, the unamortized premium for the, for the bond payable and the discount that the subsidiary had not taken into income yet. Both these amounts are taken into income. So we eliminate that and it's, and we eliminate it, and it's a gain on constructive retirement. And why is it a gain? Well, the issuer had issued the bond for a premium. That was income. The subsidiary bought a bond at a discount. That is also income. So we eliminate both of those. We eliminate both of those. So what we've done here at the end is we eliminated the gain on constructive retirement, we eliminate the income, and we also eliminate the assets, liabilities, and the premium and discount on bond.
That's as far as we're going to get on intercompany bond purchases. Remember, if you go to the website, stltest.net, we have our toughest accounting topics. These are the topics I'm asked about most often. I teach in a small group live chat. Here are the dates. The dates are always updated. And also, you can go out and find the book, Cost Accounting for Dummies, on Amazon. And I teach the book, a free course on the book, once a week where I teach a chapter of the book. Thanks very much for watching, and we'll see you next time.